Okay, so this is uh, not a book problem, uh, but this is just uh, sort of an extra lecture. Um, what I'm going to do here is kind of the reverse of the way we look at the internal forces. Uh, but I think this is a good exercise in getting you a feel for what really is going on with stress um, on a cut cross-section in a part and how it relates to the internal reaction forces uh, normal shear and moment. Okay? So what do we have here? Well, um, here what I've drawn is, uh, you can imagine this to be a cross-section through some sort of member. Uh, here are the dimensions, and actually this blue is the cross-section, so it's one inch through the page, if you will. And so instead of uh, giving you the external loads and computing the internal reaction forces, let's say experimentally or somehow, I've determined the actual traction distribution, the internal traction on this cut face. It's given as follows. So here I'm giving W. This is a distributed um, load. It has units, I should probably put the units on here. This has units of um, newtons per, I'm sorry, we're doing inch, forget this. Let's do it pounds per inch squared. So if you put in inches here for Y, you'll get units of pounds per inch squared. So it's a distributed force, force over the area. And you can see here, it has an x component that is a function of y. So the x component changes, and then a constant component of the y. And I tried to draw the distribution kind of to scale so you can see the nature of it, all right? And here are the local x and y axis. OK, so the first thing I want to do is talk about how this traction, this internal force distribution, that actually, this is the one that I'm saying is actually in the part, how this relates to the stresses, okay? So first we're going to compute the, the point normal stress, normal stress, ah, it's too early in the morning. This is sigma, and it's actually going to be a function of position, in this case just y, and then also the shear stress, and that's going to be tau. It's also going to be a function of y. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Depending on how long I go on these things, I might actually break this up. We'll do some other parts as well. Okay, I should probably check the time. Okay, so. Uh, Well, if you look at it, you might already realize that, in fact, this is the force per unit area. It has units of stress. And actually, you can see this component in the y direction is actually going to be equal to the shear stress. And this component in the x direction is actually going to be the normal stress. Okay? But let's do it a little more mathematically. Uh, rigorous just to uh, show it in another way. If you see that, that's great. If not, let's go through it this way. All right, so remember when we talked about the normal stress, it's the limit as we look at an area going to zero of this differential, oops, force vector in the normal direction, in this case the x direction, times a differential area, oops, I mean over a differential area, getting ahead of myself there, okay? So it's the force per area, these little differential forces, the limit as the area goes to zero. So if you want to, you know, here we can look at a little
a, a dy element. So this dy element, we're going to integrate over dy. It's constant through the z-axis, so that gives me a differential area, right? This thickness times dy, if we call this, right? D area is the thickness times dy, right? Or I guess if I'm doing incremental, I should do this way, right? Right. This is for a finite differential, and then as it goes down. All right. So in this case, you know, this is forces in terms of pounds. All right. So how do we get that? Well. The differential force vector is going to be that distributed force, the distributed traction, times the differential area. So you can see here this has units of pounds per inch squared, that's the distributed load, times a little differential area. That gives me the differential force, and it's a vector. So if I want the component in the x direction, Right, I would take the I unit vector and dot it with this quantity. Right? That picks out the X component. So that gives me I dotted with W delta A. And here, if you look at W, that's just going to pick off this 1,000 times Y. Okay. For now, we'll call this the x component of w. And in this case, we know from up here, it's 1,000 times y. Okay, so it's a function of position. All right, so now if we take this relationship and plug it back up into here, you can see immediately what I was talking about before. Here I'm getting the stress at the point is the limit as delta A goes to zero of the X component of that internal traction times the differential area over the differential area. These guys cancel out. And now you can see uh, when we take the limit, uh, it's already there. This just becomes the x component of that traction. You could do the same process for tau, the shear. Now we're talking about the y component because that's the component of this traction in the shearing direction. Again, they cancel out and this just becomes the y component. Okay, so for this particular distribution, this becomes um, it's a function of position, 1,000 times y. And this one is the j component that's just a constant. And these are all going to be in PSI. PSI. Okay, assuming that I put in for units of this for y inches, okay? All right, so again, just to summarize, this internal force distribution, right, if you, it's given to you in terms of a distributed traction load per area, right, those components actually are the stress components on that face. And in this particular situation, we've given you one where basically in the y direction is a constant, and in the x direction, it has a linear dependency, okay? Okay, I'm going to stop there. That'll pick this up in the second parts in, uh, in a later one, okay?